Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is Mario Gonzalez, the broker owner of Navy to Navy Homes, joined with us today by my very special friend, attorney Harry Heist. Uh, we're going to go over the top five mistakes that property managers and DIY landlords should really avoid at this time. And, and Harry, I know you're already seeing these mistakes being made here. Um, by way of introduction, if you're in Florida and you're in our neck of the woods, then, then this gentleman really needs no introduction. Um, but for those of you that are watching this that, that don't know attorney Harry Heist, um, he has been the property manager's attorney since about 1989, specializing really in the property management realm. He represents over 11,000 property managers here in Florida. He's filed close to 200,000 evictions, so he's no rookie at all in this arena. He's written and co-written uh, many of the pro-landlord changes that actually have taken place and been implemented in the Florida Landlord Tenant Act in the past 30 years. So he works both for large multifamily all the way down to smaller uh, single family and even some of the DIY self managers, if you will. He's a huge supporter of NARPM, uh, the National Association of Residential Property Managers. And I know that's taken a lot of his time um, here recently, really educating these folks. But I know you've been a member for a long time, Harry. I just want to thank you for, for being with us here today. Thanks, Mario. Thanks for having me on. You got it. And as we're going through this top five, uh, I'll ask the people in the video if they'll hang out to the end. Uh, we'll point them to some of the resources that you have that really make it a little bit easier to navigate through this whole COVID-19 um, pandemic, you know, as, as we're trying to avoid these top five things. So, um, Harry, my, my first thing to you, just by way of kind of a, a, an introduction into this whole realm here, I mean, what have you seen big picture wise changed in residential property management just in the last you know 30 60 days as we've been dealing this with this COVID-19 thing what big picture what has changed well basically everything uh everything from uh, not quite local but from state and uh, all the way to federal we've got massive amount of changes um we've got uh everything from executive orders from the, from the uh from the state We've got the CARES Act, which is federal. We've got uh, local courts, I guess it is local. We've got uh, some of the courts are open, some of the courts are closed. We have a Supreme Court order from the Sheriff's Department that impacts evictions. Everything's just, uh, just been turned upside down. Nice. It's, uh, it's the, the most wild, roughest uh, time I've ever seen for, for landlords uh, and for property managers alike. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. It certainly sounds just like in a nutshell, like I said, I know you've been doing lots of these um, and just deep diving into a lot of those. And, and again, we're just kind of hit on the top five as you and I have talked and I've watched a lot of your um, pieces out there, the mistakes that are being made. So we'll kind of go from five down to one and I'll, I'll label number five as kind of evictions. Uh, I mean, there's still property managers and landlords trying to evict people during this time. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Why that's a problem? Right, that's a huge problem. Um, right now, evictions are banned. Non-payment of rent evictions are banned for a period of 45 days. Um, it's just, uh, it's, there's nothing you can do about it. It's an executive order. It doesn't matter what type of property you have. Um, if it's a residential property, it, there are no evictions being allowed to be filed. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, there's some people filing evictions illegally and they're not going to go anywhere, but uh, no evictions for 45 days. Wow. Wow. And I know, you know, you've talked on the covered and the non-covered and, and big things there, but uh, I mean, so this is all the way from federally all the way down to, to locally and municipally, right? Right. Uh, everything. Uh, every single eviction is impacted except for evictions for um, unauthorized occupants, for instance, like non-compliance type evictions and non-renewals. Okay. Those, those evictions actually can be filed. Sure. And um, depending on the courts, right? Like you mentioned that there are some courts that are even shut down completely. So even if you had the, the legal wherewithal to do it uh, or the, the premise to do it, you may still be constrained by the courts in your area, correct? Correct. Um, although the court may take the case in, uh, it's not going anywhere from there. They're not allowing the paperwork out to be served. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So from evictions, we'll go to number four about notices. So, um, you know, there are still landlords and property managers that said, hey, you know, my tenant didn't pay in April and we anticipate worse in May and June here. So um, they're going through the same, hey, I'll do the three-day notice. Most folks in Florida don't even know about the eight-day or 13-day, but They'll, they'll go down the same path for demand of rent. Where, why is that problematic? 
Well, that's really uh, problematic. Um, according to uh, the CARES Act and according to the executive order, there's no, no non-payment of rent evictions can be given at all. So in Florida, we use what's called a three-day notice, three business days, not including Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays, but it's not allowed to be given. Uh, the order and the, the act clearly state that you can't even ask for, for the rent money in that, that method. And what just happened the other day, uh, interestingly enough, in California, uh, in California, a very large property management company just went ahead and served three-day notices like normal. The Attorney General of Cal of uh, the Attorney General of California actually filed a lawsuit against this big company for serving three-day notices. Whether they did it on purpose or or by accident, who knows? But um, you can't even serve a three-day notice. Wow, and that's going to lead into a couple of my other points here. So, I know I saw one of your, um, you know, one of the videos you're doing somewhere, or maybe it was a live broadcast. That at the beginning of the month, you still had people sending in stuff saying, "Hey, you know, I've, I've put in my notice, and, and we're shooting the eviction here." So they didn't even know that these changes had happened. Right. In fact, the majority, the majority of DIY owners, and the majority of of property managers actually in Florida are not aware of this. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, we, we're so in deep with it here, uh, it's hard for me to comprehend it, but there's a lot of, a lot of property managers out there are not, don't do this as their main full-time job. A lot of people are, a lot of people dabble in this, so right. it's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Harry, so let, we'll go to point number three, and I think the biggest mistake, um, the third biggest mistake that people are making is they're not communicating with their tenants during this time. They're kind of a, we'll call it property managing by hope. They hope their tenant pays. Well, what if, uh, what if your tenant doesn't? Um, or how are you going to communicate all the changes, you know, the changes that may happen to go with you know, people entering in and out of a home? What, you know, um, is that a huge problem that you're seeing? Is people not communicating with their tenants? Absolutely. Um, some property managers are doing nothing and they're basically waiting for the tenant to, to, uh, to contact them, which I think is a really bad approach. Um, out of sight, out of mind. If you're, if you're not going, to, if you're just going to leave your tenant alone at a time like this, uh, it, there's not much of an incentive for them to come and, and pay the rent. There's, uh, I remember when I bought my first house, I didn't, I, I bought this house, the water was on. The water was on for months and I never got a bill. And eventually one morning I wake up, I go take a shower and there's no water. Well, <laughs> I never got a bill because I never put the water in my name. It was still in the old owner's name. So it's just out of sight, out of mind. Um, you need to communicate. There, the tenants have these rumors that rent is not owed. Tenants think that rent is forgiven. Um, they, they simply think that, that all the stuff's going on means they don't have to pay the rent at all. So uh, it's, it's really creating a perfect storm. Yeah, absolutely. We saw some of the rhetoric about, you know, rent strike because renters thought that because there may be some relief for a homeowner, they were, they were misconstruing some of the, the words, you know, about, hey, we're, we can, you know, the forbearance or we can you know, delay a payment. They suddenly thought, hey, the landlord doesn't have to pay, so I don't have to pay. So, yeah, the communication with the tenants, I, I couldn't agree more is vital. You know, there, there's, uh, there's some uh, thoughts out there amongst uh, thinking amongst property managers to basically have no contact whatsoever with their tenants. So that's just kind of the way they do business. Personally, I don't really care for that. Um, in a situation like this, you want to build some rapport with your tenant. You want to see what's going on. You want to let them know that you're, you're here. You want to let them know that rent is owed. You don't want to just sit back and, and do nothing. Um, whether you're going to make a deal or a concession or any kind of an agreement, that's a different story. But without any contact whatsoever and with no relationship at all, they're just sitting there. And I think a lot of them that aren't paying the rent, they're doing it because they figure, well, the landlord's it's such a mess right now. Landlord's not bothering me. The property manager's not bothering me. I'm just going to sit here and not pay my rent. Agreed. So um, we'd say the number two problem is property managers. So we just talked property managers talking, you know, or communicating down or landlords communicating down at the tenant. Let's talk about the other way. Primarily for property managers, I, I think that not communicating to the landlords or the owners of the property can be just as problematic, if not worse. I mean, what, you know, uh, absolutely. We think about that at this time. Well, you know, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the property owner. And I'm a property owner. I, I have a bunch of rental properties and I have four property managers who handle my, my rental properties for me. And you need, you need to have some communication with your owners because they're worried right now. Think about an owner in New Jersey 
who has a property in Florida and they're seeing all this stuff on TV, they're reading all this stuff, they're looking at the Facebook uh, posts and they're nervous and they need to know what's going on and they need to know that you know what you need to do. If I was an owner, I, I'm here, I know what's going on, but if I was out of state, an absentee owner, I'd be extremely worried about what's happening right now. Are my tenants going to live rent free for years or, <laughs> or months? Am I not going to be able to evict them? I, I, I really think that it's time to maybe even go so far as get on the phone. <laughs> I know uh, we don't like to do that anymore these days. But uh, to really let the, uh, let the owner know that you're on top of it, you know what the laws are, you, uh, you're not gonna let the tenants abuse you, you're not going to, uh, to let, let things get out of control, you're gonna follow the laws, follow the guidelines, and show them that you stand out and that you're really, you're working for them. You're, you're caring about not only their property, but you're caring about them. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. It's a, uh... You know, we're supposed to be professionals in this industry. So now is the time to prove that you are a professional, that you truly are worth, uh, mm -hmm. you know, every penny that they spend. So that takes us down to number one. And we've touched on it all the way up and down this. And that is whether you're a DIY landlord or, a, or you know, a partial property manager or a full on property manager, you have got to stay current on all of these changes. It, it, literally, the playing field is changing so rapidly. It, it, it's changing almost daily. It really yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, I, uh, you mentioned in my, my little uh, bio there, intro there, that I, I work for 11,000, over 11,000 property managers. Well, I'm going to tell you that out of that 11,000, there's probably only about 1,000 of them that actually are dedicated property managers. The other 10,000 of them are holding themselves out as property managers. And you know, in Florida, you don't need to have a special license to manage property. So the, the, the property manager could be someone who's mainly involved in sales and they are managing five, 10 properties. And I'm not saying that you couldn't do a good job doing that, but most of the time, they, that type of a property manager is really out of the loop. They're completely out of the loop. They're just hoping that everything will go well. And for the most part, things do go well. But what's going on right now, uh, we really have a big problem. Um, the, they don't know what's happening. And I can tell because they're calling me and they're emailing me constantly. And they literally have no clue that what's been going on now for well over a month. Yeah. And this is really a time, I think, where the property managers, you know, the, the wheat will get separated from the chaff, uh, so to speak, if you will. So um, we've really kind of nailed those top five, Harry, from the evictions, from the notices to the communications to the tenant to the owner, and now staying abreast of all the changes that are going. So, um, Harry, where would you suggest that people go to, uh, to, to stay on top of all these uh, changes that are happening, you know, federally down to locally here in Florida? Well, uh, when you say where do they go, uh, where does the property manager go? A property manager should already have gone where, they, sh where they, uh, they should be. And that would be, they should be a member of NARPM, for instance, with National Association of Residential Property Managers. Uh, they certainly can, um, a, prop a property manager who maybe is not really in the know needs to contact their attorney and get some information there. Uh, if you're a DIY landlord, you really need to reach out to somebody like yourself who this is your focus. This is what you do. Um, and you know what's going on here. So uh, if you're just going to, if you're not going, going to be in touch with what's happening out there, you're actually putting your owners in danger. Um, yeah. it's, it's really not good. Like I said, anyone can proclaim themselves to be a property manager, but there's very few of them out there. We have master property managers. I believe you are a master property yeah. manager. Um, you put out videos, you, um, it, you know, you're, you're serious about what you're doing and a property manager, in my opinion, working for all different types, I really think should be serious about what they're doing. They're doing either go in all the way or don't dabble in this, but you know, it's the way it is. You got it. There's a lot of dabbling. So, you know, I always say that a property manager's job is to do kind of two things at once. And that is to maximize the return on investment on their landlord's investment, their home, uh, while at the same time minimizing the risk that both they have and then the landlord has in managing that and having that home managed. So 
Uh, Harry, well, I appreciate the shout out on this end, but I'm also going to give a shout out to you. Um, everything that you've compiled there at evict.com. So if you're in Florida and you're looking for resources, go no further than evict.com. And right at the top, he has the coronavirus big red tab on there. He's got uh, all the resources I promised you. He's got resources of what is it covered in an uncovered property. He's got uh, the proper forms to submit now instead of the normal three day demand, uh, how you would actually do that. So Harry, I appreciate the resources that you um, continue to put in there uh, to continue to put out the videos and the information in just this ever changing landscape that we have. So uh, I appreciate you being with us today and going through the top five. Thanks, Mario. It's an absolute pleasure working for professionals.